on three, you guys uh, start. Um, One, two, three. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Brief with Jimmy, Song, and Tone Vays. My name is Valentin Schmidt, and I'll be your host for today. And we have a couple of super exciting uh, stories uh, for you, including one very interesting one, an article published on Hacker Noon, where somebody did uh, some calculations and said that if everybody activated their SegWit addresses right now, then the mempool would basically be zero because the improved transaction protocol could handle all the transactions on the network. Jimmy, you take. Yeah, so this is a great article for a lot of the people that are newer to Bitcoin. If you uh, haven't been in Bitcoin long and you're watching our show, I would suggest you read this and do exactly what it says. Take ownership of your coins and start using SegWit addresses uh, because you're, you're going to save money. The mempool is pretty high right now. We'll get to e exactly why that is in a bit. But, uh, you know, get get yourself your own wallet and start using SegWit uh, because that that will save you money. And it's it's in your own uh, own best interest and it won't be confiscatable if you have it in your own wallet. And that's that's really the key here uh, is that you you need to learn how to be a sovereign individual through Bitcoin. Yes. Basic rule, unless you have your Bitcoin off the exchange and in your own wallet, preferably a hardware wallet, you don't own your own Bitcoin. Tone base. Yeah, no, I, I really like the article. Now, people are saying that the, the numbers that he's using are very, very optimistic and it assumes like, you know, uh, perfect scenarios for, uh, I mean, the, 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 the least amount of data inside each Bitcoin transactions. So, so yeah, so so even if the numbers are a little bit on the optimistic side, uh, people always miss the point of the article and they always jump on the little minor uh, insignificant details, right? The point is that if Bitcoin, that if segment penetration was 95% instead of 5%, we would not be dealing with these high fees or high transactions. Uh, but we are fighting against a centralized group of people that are trying to, you know, turn Bitcoin into PayPal and they want to have their own private coin, which is why they're pushing Bcash. And we'll get to that in the next story. Actually, it's not exactly the next story. We have uh, another little warm up uh, before we get to the big one. Um, and that's we talked about the USA Luge team. They won a donation in Bitcoin. They gave us a shout out, uh, Jimmy Song and Tone Ways. Uh, they thought Bitcoin can become the official sponsor. And now they've given some targets, uh, how much money they need to do what. For example, uh, five Bitcoin, they will put the Bitcoin logo on the Luge team hats. And you can then buy those hats uh, in the merchandise shop. Jimmy. Yeah, so um, I, I like these targets. Um, I love how, uh, you know, 21 million BTC, we find Satoshi and get him on a sled. That's kind of funny. Um, I, I would like to see some sort of a, an ad, a donation address so we can all like keep track of how much has been donated to the USA Luge team. Um, you know, five BTC, um, you know, you get the, the hat, 10, you get the patch sewn on the thing. Apparently, they're, uh, everything, uh, they can do sponsorships everywhere except the Olympics. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully like they can have some interview after the Olympics or something where they can show their nice Bitcoin logo. Anyway, this is a, sort of a fun way to participate in uh, the whole Olympic experience. And, you know, they'll, they'll be in Pyeongchang. And of course, Bitcoin will feature prominently in Korea. So, the, uh, you know, this is like kind of a fun thing. Thanks for the shout out, guys. Um, and hopefully we get, we get some donations to USA Luge. Tone. Yeah, no, this is great. You just need a Bitcoin address. Make sure it's a SegWit address, please, guys. Uh, <laughs> get, get, get a SegWit Bitcoin address so everybody can see the donations coming in and which metrics are being met. Um, I think a cool way, since they can't put all of those logos and, and stuff during the Olympics, uh, would be awesome if they, you know, put out like videos of them training and like practicing with that stuff oh know, that that's that. a that's a great idea toad i want to see that <laughs> yeah so so that would be great maybe maybe a shout out to you know like all the people that donated bitcoin during their training videos before they before they jump on the on the 
uh, Andalus, things like that. Yeah, so, so there's lots of things that they can do to like kind of help promote this even further. Okay, uh, one important thing they should not do is uh, take Bcash as a sponsorship money. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's a complete and utter disaster. Uh, two exchanges, Coinbase and GDAX, they finally, after five months or so, enabled uh, Bcash deposits and trading, and both of them had to halt. And we're going to talk about this in depth because it's a, it's a big story. And we have the Bcash pump. Uh, up 40 percent or so and we have the mempool spam so it seems that the bcash pumpers they always take these big news as an opportunity to pump the price tone why don't, why don't you go ahead on this one yeah uh, i believe in my tweet uh for this morning i wrote you know coinbase and gdax and then in parentheses uh, the shit show goes on but now with bcash <laughs> uh i mean the the incompetence of uh of, of Coinbase and that organization like knows no bounds. And uh, last night they launched their Bcash sale. The order book was super thin. Uh, clearly they weren't ready. Uh, someone tweets at me a picture that Bcash is worth $9,500 on GDAX. Uh, and everyone is now rushing to sell it to make money from that. And, uh, and all of a sudden it goes down. When are they launching this thing again? In about two hours, it's going to come back online. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, a anyway, the thing is going to be crazy. And what, they're not even going to let you sell it right away. They want to make sure there's enough buyers or something or like, what's their plan? One, one hour to allow liquidity to be established. So at 9 a.m. Pacific standard time, BCH markets will enter post only mode, which means that you could put in orders but nothing will set. Uh, no, nothing will actually trade uh, for at least one hour because they want their order books to fill or to right. to and to get populated, not filled. I, I, I would I would love to see who is actually planning to buy this stuff on GDAX because uh, I don't know, Jimmy, if you have the Twitter handle to that poll that that somebody did, and <laughs> I thought that was. I thought that was hilarious. Did you have that one? I don't have it on me right now. Here, let me see if I can go grab it. Give me one uh, second. I have, I have the link in our... Um, yeah, so that's... That. The, there we go. Let's show you what Tone is talking about. This is Crypto Horn Hairs. When GDAX comes back online, BCH price will pump or dump. Dump is gets 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that's 4,000 votes, right? That's not that, that, that's a decent sample size. And, and it's funny how people are complaining that he hacked uh, Twitter and rigged the, the, the poll. Uh, now, some might suspect that's a picture, but if that was a picture, you would be able to click on it and zoom in on the picture, which you clearly can't do. Um, so that's a legitimate poll. What that tells you is that less than 21 people uh, voted for pump mm -hmm. out of the 4,291. Uh, so that's, um, I don't know, we'll see. Like, honestly, I, I turned off my internet last night. I didn't want to deal with this nonsense. I mean, I was out anyway, but uh, like, th th this is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know, you have any other comments on this? Uh, I mean, we're going to talk about, you know, the coordinated pump of Bcash in a minute, uh, but I'll, unless you have something else to add, uh, Jimmy. Well, I mean, I, I was out at dinner with a bunch of Bitcoiners uh, here in Austin and we, we were watching as like this, this was big news. Everyone was like watching like the Bitcoin cash price and everything else. Um, but it, it's, uh, you know, there, there definitely seemed to be a series of interesting coincidences, if you will. Um, obviously, the mempool was going up yesterday um, significantly. And uh, by the way, these uh, the bands that dropped off, um, it's largely because there's a mempool limit of 500 megabytes and the, those have dropped off for that reason. Uh, but yeah, there, there's been all of these, uh, you know, new transactions coming in. Um, somebody knew something is, is, is my guess. And, and when, when it was announced that Bitcoin cash trading is available on GDAX, um, certainly seemed like something was going on. Like, uh, you know, Bitcoin cash price was going up all day before this news. So people knew about it, or at least somebody knew something was going to happen. So, um, uh, you know, that that was obviously one thing. And then you had this abrupt uh, stop to the exchange launch. Um, 
And, you know, you can see that the order book was frozen at like $8,500 per Bitcoin cash. It's trading at like uh, $3,500 to $4,000 pretty much everywhere else. So this is a massive arbitrage opportunity if you could have gotten in. Uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, Coinbase, GDAX, uh, yeah, they, they completely flubbed this thing. Uh, from a technological standpoint, I mean, like, how can you launch something and have have everything crash like a minute later? Did you not do any testing? Like, what what's going on with these people? Like, you gotta you gotta at least test this stuff. I mean, you, did you did you at least have an idea of like the volumes that would be? I mean, like you announce it a few minutes later, it's online and then it crashes. Okay, good job. You just proved that your back end is can't handle any of this stuff um, or you have some catastrophic bug you don't have unit tests or testers or I mean come on guys like I, I, I complain about Coinbase a lot but this is like this is taking it to another level I mean if you're gonna coordinate and like you know if you're gonna have insider trading which I somebody had I, I, I don't know who but somebody was pumping the price all through the day before and you know it was up like 30 30 40 percent before this news happened so uh somebody knew something and uh and all of these people uh you know like if you're gonna do something like this at least be competent enough um obviously they they halted trading and they they are they they're trying to i'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of sres at uh at gdax and coinbase that are like uh that are trying to fix things right now um, and they gave like a 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, open and they're going to have this order book go for an hour. Um, my gut feeling is that this is going to be a lot like what Mt. Gox was like in 2013, April of 2013, where they would come online for like five minutes and then like they would get overwhelmed with orders and then uh, they would shut down. I mean, the level... Of technical competence uh, required to uh, run something like this and the volumes that they should be expecting um, I don't think they're gonna be online for very long but who knows maybe, maybe they'll have fixed everything and they they will manage to stay online for longer than five minutes uh, yeah I mean the this whole thing it just some, something reeks really bad um, just the amount of pumping that Bitcoin Cash did in in, in the hours before their announcement, uh, the amount of uh, you know transactions that seem to be added to the mempool, high high fee transactions on top of that to make it so that it's very difficult to transact unless you pay very high fees. Um, it, it just something feels very coordinated to me, um, and uh, and you know, um, good time to. Uh, sell some Bitcoin cash, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I don't have any to sell. Um, I sold all of mine long ago. <laughs> um, I sold all my B cash long ago, and it's amazing how many people are now like blaming me for them selling their B cash, which is borderline funny to me anyway, because B cash is a scam coin. If you wanted to hold on to scams, you should have held on to scams, right? Uh, also, uh, I give free advice on live YouTube every day. Uh, consider my advice worth the amount of money you are paying <laughs> for this advice. And um, even if you call me for a pro privately, I don't give trading advice, guys. I give education advice. And the education is very, very simple. All right? um, the reason why I support Bitcoin is because I believe in the technology behind Bitcoin which I refer to as the blockchain. I don't know what you guys refer to as the blockchain, but I refer to the technology behind Bitcoin as the blockchain. I trust the people that are developing this technology. I refer to as the blockchain. And this group for now is known as Bitcoin Core, which is a group of 100 different developers. Uh, many more than that, actually. But yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm, I'm it's, I think it's, it's, it's closer to 500 in number of uh, people that Even have better. contributed. Even better. And um, all of this other crap uh, in the crypto space, I haven't seen any technology there worth a damn. Uh, and the majority of it is straight up scams. And the other small majority of it are just dumb projects run by incompetent pro programmers. So I have no reason to support nor promote anything that I believe is technologically incompetent. This is why the proper thing to do is to sell incompetent scam coins as soon as you can. 
because otherwise you're supporting bad technology. And it gets worse when you're promoting it on national television. Uh, so if we're ready, uh, we can flip screen share and I'll get to that unless you want to say something else, Jim. Well, I just wanted to show that it, it was pumping uh, like right before all of this stuff was was being announced. You, you, you can sort of see the pump and uh, and and it, it, it was happening, you know, uh, more or less throughout the day yesterday uh, before this announcement. So I, it's it, it feels like somebody knew what was going to happen and they tried to trade it. And then, you know, GDAX sort of fell on its face um, and. Oh God! What what a face plan! Oh somebody somebody always knows. Like, yeah, yeah. Even, even, even in regulated markets where you can actually go to prison for mm -hmm. trading on this information, people always do. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, crypto markets, there's no such thing as insider trading. So of course people are gonna know the information ahead of time and they're gonna act on it. Um, now also there's no such thing as insider trading of currencies. But we don't know what Bitcoin is, right? Bitcoin isn't exactly a currency. Bitcoin <laughs> is uh, an unregistered asset, right? So it doesn't really have a category. So because it doesn't have a category, there's really no such thing as uh, insider trading, nor is there a regulatory body that's going to uh, go after anyone for any of this stuff. You can totally uh, trade on insider information. This is how all of these altcoins work uh, from the beginning. This is what... Uh, ICO pre-sale is. Um, I mean, that's what these things are. There, there is uh, uh, there, no one is regulating this stuff, so you can perfectly do it and profit off of your users. There's nothing wrong with that legally. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just yeah. I the the whole thing just reeks of some coordination. Um, and obviously, there are people going on TV today to you know talk about this stuff. So they they were trying to set something up. I'll be watching very closely, um, and you know this. This, yeah, the the whole thing is just kind of crazy. So to sum up, uh, and we have seen this before. We have seen the mempool spam. We have seen the B cash dump. Last time there was a big announcement that was in November when the two X got canceled. We had a huge, massive pump in B cash. Bitcoin price went down. Mempool was spammed, so we see that again. We have a big announcement. Jimmy saying uh, people have been front running that, or they've been front pumping that, because the the last question I have regarding this is why, um, when the exchange is open, GDAX and Coinbase, uh, the price goes up, where everybody said once they open, everybody's going to dump their coins on there. Well, people try. People try to dump their coins, right? They couldn't because mm. uh, GDAX shut it down, right? Well, I mean, um, they couldn't handle the volume, but uh... well, every, everyone I know of was running to log into uh, GDAX to sell their B cash at eight thousand mm. dollars, and yeah. no one was able to do so, as far as I know, except Charlie Lee, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, he so. he he had the coins right on there, and I think as soon as he got the announcement, he just he just clicked sell, something like that. So, so you would say that once uh, everything uh, works smoothly, uh, there will be a lot of selling, and the price will probably be correct. I, I, I have no idea. I mean, a lot of people are new on Coinbase. This is the thing that uh, we need to understand. They, they, they're getting like ten to a hundred thousand new users every day. They log in, they see Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin, Bitcoin is like seventeen thousand dollars. Bitcoin Cash is like. Four thousand dollars. What do you think they're gonna buy, right? Like, well, well, it's it's actually worse than that, Jimmy. Uh, from the screenshots that I saw of Coinbase, they actually listed Bitcoin Cash ahead of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking to buy something from uh, Coinbase, your first option is Bitcoin Cash. Your second option is Bitcoin. Your third option is Ethereum, and then I don't know Ripple or you know whatever other BitConnect or whatever other scam they're selling on there next uh, behind uh, Ethereum. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I mean, I my my gut feeling is that they don't really care that much about Bitcoin. They uh, they just want to make money off of it, and uh, and you know they they don't feel the need to contribute to the community in in this particular way. They'd rather pump Bitcoin Cash at this point, but we'll see we'll see how that works out for them. Okay, we're gonna keep covering that story. Next one, a small one, but a funny one uh, is the is the fork generator. <laughs> so if you can't be bothered to program your own hard fork, then um, you can use this website here, forkgen.tech, and you can basically, uh, it programs your own uh, hard fork. Good luck with it if nobody knows about it, but 
at least you can do it. Yeah. Me- yeah. So this, this was made by, um, I think some, some people that felt, uh, you know, they, that wanted hard forks to go away. So they made it super, super easy so that the entire hard fork landscape would just go, uh, get flooded. Um, yeah, you can, you can get the binaries and source code for, for 0.005 Bitcoin. Um, there may or may not exist some coupon codes if you if you know some people. Um, I've been told that, hey, Jimmy, if you want to do one, let me know. I can get you a coupon code. Um, yeah, so there might be a Bitcoin Jimmy at some point in time. Um, maybe even a Bitcoin Tone or a Bitcoin Valentine. Um, but yeah, the idea is uh, you can make a hard fork really easily. And, um, and you know, I... I, I I don't know how that would play with everything else. Uh, certainly, there's, you know, there's a lot of interesting things like, uh, you know, you can set your own pub key address prefix, script address prefix, script secret key prefix, angle of logo. This is hilarious, right? Like, uh, one of the things that Bitcoin Cash did was I think they tilted the B in Bitcoin Cash to to be a little bit more or something like that. So that's kind of an inside joke. Um, and no, you could... they, they tilted it in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they, they moved it 90 degrees. Yeah. So <laughs> so you could do that, right? Like uh, you can you can do apparently if you only move it one degree, then it, it, it costs you more money. Um, so, yeah, lo- lots of lots of stuff here. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to more hard forks. Yay. OK, Tone, are you looking forward to more hard forks? Uh, only if they're worth more than 5% of the value <laughs> of a Bitcoin. I mean, that's my personal limit for when I take my Bitcoin out of cold storage, right? So I believe Bitcoin gold is now back up to 2.5%. So keep pumping that one so I can sell it at 5% above. Uh, I mean, that was my limit. I was happy to sell all my B trash at 10% of the value of a Bitcoin. I am happy to sell any uh, of your hard forks at 5% of the value of the Bitcoin. That's my personal limit. So if anyone wants to hard fork and give me 5%, go for it. So you're okay with it if you can make money, Tone. Are you okay with uh, CNBC fast money, uh, Twitter being run by somebody who's not employed by CNBC? Oh uh, yeah, that, that, that's an awesome one. Uh, hey, Whale Panda, shout out, man. I mean, this is just like, it, it's not even like investigative reporting that 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 was crazy. Like people should be doing this, right? Like whale panda should not be the one doing this. <laughs> but uh, no, CNBC fast money looks it looks to be grossly incompetent here. Uh, it's very very obvious that um, whoever this like uh, Gabby is, uh, she should not be employed by CNBC fast money because she very clearly handed off the Twitter handle of CNBC fast money to her husband. Uh, who is all over the big, the Bcash scene, uh, pumping it up. Uh, so uh, we'll see how far this story goes. Please do some digging. Please start investigating. Uh, I mean, we'll see. It's not even a, obviously this is not a conspiracy theory, but let's go even further. Um, hey Jimmy, so click on uh, uh, click on the link for the Bitcoin Cash Fund. Right, I saw it a little bit lower. Than that. Uh, right. uh, just scroll down. Just scroll. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, click on that. Uh huh. Right. So that's the Bitcoin Cash Fund. Is there a link to that? Oh, there isn't. Okay. Yeah. I have it on my screen share. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the Bitcoin Cash Fund, you can go and take a look at what it is, and you will see that uh, Paul is uh, basically one of the founders of this thing. And it's a pool of money specifically designed to pump B Cash and, you know, uh, played uh, basically the pump B cash over a Bitcoin, and this guy is clearly in control of the CNBC's fast money Twitter account. Uh, uh, yes, you- uh, to to make it to make it clear, uh, this Gabby Basenstein, she controls the CNB fast money Twitter. Her husband Paul Basenstein, he's involved with the B cash fund, but he doesn't work for CNBC and Whale Panda made it pretty clear that he does use the Twitter though. Right. Correct. And uh, this is why the Bcash agenda is being pushed all over uh, CNBC. Well, I guess the Fast Money Show, but CNBC in general, right? 
That's the financial show. So if everyone on that financial show is somehow involved or potentially in some way being compensated from the Bitcoin cash fund, which is specifically designed to dish out money uh, to promote Bcash, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe there is a serious investigation that could take place with what it is CNBC Fast Money is pushing. Uh, talk, talk about shows I don't have, I no longer have an interest in in appearing on because it's clearly ultra biased and it's so freaking obvious. So don't you think it's interesting that um, we have uh, all these uh, centralized figures uh, cheerleading for Bcash, CNBC, Roger Ware, Bcash Fund, uh, and the only people who are promoting Bitcoin Core are the little people like uh, us, for example, and the people on Twitter. There is no cheerleader for Bitcoin Core. Right, right Jimmy? Yeah, I mean, and that's a good thing. Uh, I don't I don't I don't want a leader. I don't I, I don't want this to be a place where, you know, like one person can go on CNBC and pump the heck out of it. Um, I, I want the people that are knowledgeable in our community, not the people that are trying to, you know, uh, get a quick 20% return or something like that over a week. Like I, those people can go to Bitcoin Cash. I'm fine with that. Like that's like, please go, go, go. If you want like short term, you know, three month returns or something like that, go, go trade altcoins to your heart's content. You have my blessing. Go do that. You but mean three you, days. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. I, I'm, in, I'm in Bitcoin for the long term. I think Tone's in it for the long term. Valentin, you're in it for the long term. We're, we're, we don't, we don't want to trade. Uh, I mean, I know Tone talks trading, but I mean, for the most part, he's a holder. I mean, we, we're, we're here to make the Bitcoin ecosystem get better. We're here for the revolution. We're not here to make 10, 20 percent, uh, you know, like trading and then like lose another 10, 20 percent trading and then, you know, whatever. That's, that's not what we're about. And this is not what Bitcoin's about, at least in my opinion. And uh, if you're in it for that, please go to Bitcoin Cash. Go trade to your heart's content. Like, I, I uh, best of luck to you. But I, I think you'll be back in any case. But do let us know uh, before they pump it the next time. And, uh, <laughs> although we won't buy into it, uh, we may uh, announce, pre announce it and see what happens. So that's it. Uh, let's go to the price. Maybe you can look. Uh, do you want to look at Bcash for a second and uh, explain the pump there? Or uh, I mean, I, there, there's really not that much to explain there. Uh, but just to close out. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so besides this poll, there was another really cool poll from the same person. I retweeted it. And it's like, if you were to be given $10,000 in cash or in Bcash, but you could not uh, access it for 10 years, would you take the USD or would you take the Bcash? Obviously, you see where I voted for because I don't believe that Bcash is going to stick around for 10 years. I, don't, I, I didn't expect it to stick around that long. But it looks like the majority of the people voted would rather take the US dollar versus the Bcash. What do you think this poll would say if this was Bitcoin versus 10,000 in Bitcoin versus 10,000 in USD? So just think about that, right, before you start saying how great Bcash is. Well, Ron uh, Paul, Ron Paul had a, a poll, a similar one, uh, asking his followers whether they would prefer gold, USD, or Bitcoin, and they all said Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, Bitcoin won that and, one. And one final note on the Bitcoin Cash Fund, just so I can, since I'm screen sharing, uh, just so you can see the founders, I uh, guess the board members or whatever, and you can see the advisors that are involved. No surprise. Um, oh boy. <laughs> uh, Right. No, 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 no surprise there. And uh, and the thing is, so so here's a little investigation. Now, I tried. Now, I'm hearing rumors that there is a potential that uh, uh, what do you call it? Brian Kelly is somehow involved, which is why he's pushing Bcash. But I cannot collaborate this at all because I am blocked from his Twitter account, uh, which is why I can't even search it. So I don't even know what. Uh, uh, like when you get blocked, I can't even search for the people. So um, I, I, I know I called him out for shilling Bcash on CNBC, which is why he blocked me on Twitter. Um, so those of you that have access to his Twitter account, uh, please take a look. If he's, uh, he's obviously not listed on their website, but if anyone can take a look and see if he is or isn't involved in this Bitcoin cash fund, uh, that could also explain a lot of the, 
a lot of the things that are happening with CNBC's fast money and why it's just you know completely ridiculous over there. Um, all right, uh, let's go. Let's get to the price. Um, I, I did pull up the price of Dcash. Um, I mean, this is the daily chart. Uh, I mean, I, I I can't do TA on this, right? Like for two reasons. One, I know it's a scam coin, so what's the point? And two, uh, I mean, what am I looking at here, right? I mean, this, these are daily candles. This thing went up on a reasonable amount of amount in a day. If you were using my indicator to trade this, um, your long entry at first would have been right here. Uh, based on a daily chart, all right, am I drawing this thing or what? Um, your initial long entry, if you were trading this, I mean, you had the MACD crossover, but that's kind of irrelevant. Um, your initial long entry would have been here. Um, you would have exited your long trade and considered it, you know, uh, bad when this red one came around. So this would have been, you know, uh, a break-even trade up or thereabout, and then your next long entry, there was no short entry, and then your next long entry would have been right here, and I don't know how profitable this is going to be, right? Because look at this candle, uh, and the day is just starting, right? So for all we know, this thing could end up here at 0.5, or it can end down here below 0.1, right? So who the hell knows? Actually, um, Tony, can you pull up the last pump? Because we had a crazy candle uh, like that uh, in November when it went up to 0.40 and then it closed it. Yeah, the, right. the blow off top. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, you have one of these situations. Um, if I throw my indicator on it, let's see if it would have helped you. Uh, I mean, sure, it told you to enter your long trade right here where this red line is. I guess I'll color it in green. Uh, that was good. Where did this trade tell you that it's over? Well, since it never made it to a nine, it told you that it's over right here, unless you took your profits. I mean, you can take your profits anytime you like. I mean, no one's stopping you. Um, so, and look what happened after that pump, right? All of the uh, Bcash trolls just shut the hell up the moment this was happening. And then they stayed with their mouth shut all the way into here until it made it all the way back to only seven and a half percent of the price of a Bitcoin. And over the last three days, they all come out of the woodworks again uh, because of this uh, coordinated pump to pump it through Coinbase, which are big friends of Bcash, along with, you know, spamming that Bitcoin mempool with high fee transactions. And this and the last time was basically an eighty percent correction, top to bottom, point forty five to point seven. Right. Uh, you see, well, what, what, well, what people have to realize. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but what people have to realize is this, right? When you have coordinated organizations that are, uh, are strictly around to promote Bitcoin Cash, the best way for them to promote Bitcoin Cash is to try to make Bitcoin unusable, right? So you don't have a coordinated effort to make Bcash unusable, right? There, there is no like a uh, pool of Bitcoin that people are using to uh, destroy Bitcoin Cash. It's basically people like me trying to explain the reality of the situation. Is Bitcoin uh, Cash usable? I don't know. Do people use it? Well, not for <laughs> anything. I mean, if you want to buy a miner from Bitmain, right? I mean, that's the currency that they accept. They, that they accept. But, but the point is, uh, there, are act there is actual money behind propping up Bcash and uh, crushing Bitcoin. There is no pool of money to do the opposite of that. It's basically like our YouTube channel, World Crypto Network, you know, and maybe like two other, like Whale Panda, right? I mean, the, the, that's all we pretty much have. It's literally like a grassroots movement because companies like... Uh, Blockstream and Chainco Labs are too busy programming innovation for B, uh, for Bitcoin that Bcash copies and plays off as its own by changing one variable, right? Uh, meanwhile, they're using all of their money to coordinate 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 attacks on Bitcoin and prop up Bcash on national television. Uh, so this is what we're dealing with, and we're going to be dealing with it for a while. The beauty of it is. The technology behind Bcash is pure garbage, 
which is why it's only going to end in tears while Bitcoin continues to innovate. Um, all right, let's get to the price of Bitcoin, unless you guys want to comment. Well, I think if you look at the four hour on Bitcoin Cash, that would have actually been a lot easier to all right, so let's find say, an let's... entry and stuff. Sure, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> all right. Um, find right. an exit. Right. So, so, he, so here's the indicator that, you know, like, again, people are like, why are you only using this? Well, because it's the only thing that's useful, especially in this shit. Um, well, here you go. Uh, if you were holding uh, this uh, B, B cash, you the four hour chart it gave you a selling indication right here, which usually leads to a one to four candle correction and then higher. So the moment it started going higher, where was your bullish entry into B trash? Well, your bullish entry as a trader into B trash was right here. The moment the candle with the green number on top of it started trading above a candle with a prior green number on top of it. That's why you don't enter on this candle with a two, you enter on this candle with a three. So your entry using the four hour chart was right there. Now, what happened to this trade? Well, this trade told you to sell right here on the nine for once again, a one to four candle correction then higher. The correction was only one candle. I mean, no, no one stopped you from taking your profit there. So what's happening now? Well, right now, once again, you have a green number trading above a prior green number, which if you are a Bcash trader, that is your long position. I mean, look, I'm, I'm being unbiased here. I'm just looking at the candles. It, in irrelevant to what the asset actually is. Uh, like this could be horse manure. I probably prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is with the coordinated pumps though, um, because they don't reflect normal market movement, um, that does make the technical indicator slightly less reliable. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit on my answer again. So because the coordinated pumps, they don't reflect normal market movements, for which the indicator is a program, like it well, could fall. But that's a, that's, a, that's supposed to be irrelevant, right? I mean, the indicator does its best job to tell you when to when to enter and when to exit, uh, regardless of news, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't have the capacity to factor in the news, right? So, no news, but coordinated pumps. That's yeah, the I same mean, thing as news. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I think uh, I mean basically this indicator did very well on the four hour. Um, you obviously had a lot of profit you could have made over there, but. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, here's the here's the one hour chart. Um, one hour looks a little more messy, but there there was a the blow off hour, top. Yeah. One hour is generally messy, so um, if you look at this last one that actually made it to a nine, again, it tells you to take your profit on a nine. Most likely, outcome is a one to four candle correction than higher. If you recognize that the one to four candle correction is ending and it's going higher, when do you get in? Well, sure, you get in. When a green number starts trading above a prior green number, when do you get out? Well, you get out whenever you feel like it. If you're able to catch the top, um, you get out when the price flips, telling you the trade is no longer successful. But in this case, you're still getting out with a profit or you get out on a nine, which we didn't get. Right. Um, yeah. Get out when you make 100% in one hour. <laughs> right. in, in, in the current situation, based on the one hour chart, are you long or short B trash? Well, you're long, right? Because the moment this candle with a two on top of it started trading above a candle with a one on top of it, you're back into your long trade on B trash. Hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll see if there's a further coordinated well, I, pump later today, uh, but I mean, it certainly I, I looks like it's happening. Well, look, well, to be honest, like it makes perfect sense why Bcash would pump like crazy right now, right? Because if you can go out and buy Bcash at a price of like $3,000 on other exchanges, if you can move that shit into Coinbase, you have a, you, you might be able to sell it at a higher price, right? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Right? So it makes total sense for people to be buying up this stuff on like Poloniex, try to transfer it into your Coinbase account, then try to be the first guy to sell it. Because it's going to open at like 8K, but I, but it's going to be down to default. It's going to be down to like, you know, uh, 3K within minutes. And it's probably going to undershoot mm. or overshoot, however you want to call it. Oh, man, my battery is starting to run out. So before your battery runs out, can you give Holy us shit. a Bitcoin uh, analysis? Right. Please? Sure. Uh, so Bitcoin, uh, again, the weekly chart is still looking 
uh, clean, but the current weekly candle, uh, the week is still ongoing. So we'll see how the week ends. Uh, the week is still bullish, but starting to get in a little bit of trouble. Now, here is the daily chart. So again, following the same logic, the daily chart gave you a bullish entry right here at the price, uh, at current price, so around $17,000. Now, the exits were going to be either a nine or a price flip. The price flip took place yesterday. It closed on a price flip. Your, your daily chart is no longer in bullish stance. Um, is there a short trade on the table based on daily charts? Well, sure. Uh, right at current prices, right? The moment um, this candle with the red two started trading below the candle with the red one, technically that's a short trade if you're daring enough to enter short trades on Bitcoin, which might be even dumber than buying Bcash. Uh, but hey, uh, people can go longer short. Here's a four hour chart. This is what I was expecting with my arrows. Uh, clearly the uh oh, um, clearly my big cash coordinated pump uh, uh, put a little ringer on that. Yes, in yesterday's video, I'm pretty sure I said, well, the short trade using the four hour chart took place here. Uh, where is the exit from the short trade? Well, in about 20 minutes, right? When we're going to have a nine. Uh, we're probably gonna have a nine at least part time of the next candle. So that would give you a potential exit on this short trade, which was fairly okay uh, in Bitcoin. Please go back to yesterday's morning video for more details. And finally, on the one hour chart, uh, we do have a 13 here, but the 13s haven't really been very useful uh, in using this indicator on cryptos, at least in my experience. Um, so I wouldn't put too much stock into this, but is the, what's the current trade on Bitcoin using this indicator? on the one hour chart, well, once again, it's a short play, right? Because you just got a candle with a red number trading below a prior red number. So currently you're in the middle of a short trade. Uh, we're about the last trade that the one hour chart gave you. Well, sure, you had this candle right here. Uh, so either a two or a three. So whichever one you prefer, the moment a candle with a green number started trading above a candle with a prior green number, where was your exit? Well, you can exit any time you like with a profit, or you can exit if a nine would have come, which it never did. So your other exit is right here, the price flip, okay? Where on this candle did you exit? If you exited at the bottom of the candle, you made a cup of coffee. Uh, if you exited at the top of the candle, you probably made a little bit of money, okay? So this is, this is your uh, using this indicator to trade one hour charts. You're about to get a death cross, which is bad. Um, also, look how this came up and hit the moving average, which is also, um, you know, traditional trading. Your MACD, your RSI, your RSI never made it to over a board. But if you zoom this out, I mean, there's plenty of traditional trading you could have used, right? I mean, look at this falling below the 50-day moving average, using the 50-day moving average as resistance, um, using the 200, sorry, the 200-hour moving average as support. Um, you broke below the 200 hour moving average, it collapses, it comes back to retest it. This is actually the perfect time to short any asset when it pulls back into the depth cross. Uh, it creates a perfect uh, shorting opportunity. We're about to get this depth cross on Bitcoin in, uh, in the one hour charts. And, uh, you know, this is going to uh, make this red. Uh, and there you go, because my battery is going to die in a second. Uh, so I'm going to hand it back to you guys uh, for your closing statements. Closing statement sounds like we're a bit choppy uh, for Bitcoin, at least today and uh, maybe the rest of the week. Thanks a lot, Tone, for price analysis. Jimmy, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Jimmy, last words. Well, this song is done. <laughs>